Monsoon by Uma Krishna Swami, illustrated by Jamel Akib. All summer we have worn the scent of dust, gravelly, grainy, gritty dust, blowing on the winds and sprinkling through our clothes and hair. At breakfast, Papa says, when the monsoon rains arrive, they'll wash this dust away. Going to the market, I cross the road with Mummy. We need tomatoes, she says, and maybe some beans. We pass the old tea stall. It clatters with the chink of cups, hums and thrums with wondering and worrying. Will monsoon rains come soon? The radio crackles with news of rain showers by the sea, but that seashore is far from us. Mummy sighs. She watches the sky, and she has questions. How much will it rain? How fast? How hard? She worries about floods, and so I worry too. And there's another question. No one dares to ask it. It hangs in my mind, as the cry of the crows in the old neem tree hangs in the dust-pink air. What if they never come, those monsoon rains? Still in the afternoon, as mummy chops and stirs, and lunch smells fill the air, my busy hands fold paper boats. I crease their crisp white sails. In my mind I see them float in oceans of puddles. Evening falls. I watch the faces on TV, old and young, poor and rich. All across India we wait for rain. The heat makes me feel like a crocodile, crouching snap-jawed. When Papa comes from work, I run down to meet him. Across the street, people crowd around the bus stop shelter. Between the screeching of brakes and the scrambling of feet, I hear excitement. Wait, listen, was that thunder or the rumble of an engine? At bedtime, Nani tells us tales of when the monsoon was wetter, fuller, longer, back in the days before fields gave way to city streets. I listen till her stories fade to dreams. Before day breaks, I hear a coil sing, long and wild, in a voice like melting sunshine. From far away, a peacock wails. I answer him out loud and startle everyone awake. Hot blue winds tear through the city. They rip the paper of billboards and shred the smiles of movie stars. I complain, but Papa smiles and says we need this hot, dry wind to ripen those sweet mangoes. Waves of heat dance upon rocks and shimmer over rooftops, but by the afternoon, long gray clouds begin to trail across the sky. Nani says, you'll see. When those partridge feather clouds arrive, the monsoon rain will follow. Can we go play? I ask. She looks up at the sky. Don't take too long. In the hopscotch square we've chalked in the alley, my brother and I jump and hop and whirl to the sound of temple bells, clanging, clanging. Three forward and three back and no stops in between will make it rain, my brother says. That's silly, I tell him, but I try it anyway. In the street, a taxi driver honks an angry horn, but the old cow is tired and will not move. Wheels inch around her. We laugh. The driver frowns and wags his head at us and tears off in a cloud of dust. As we head home, the sky is filled with full, fat clouds. The wispy feather trails are gone. From far away, thunder pounds a giant heartbeat. We know it won't be long. The wind ruffles the leaves of the old neem tree. The newspaper man swishes plastic bags over the day's headlines. Suddenly it is still. 
a stillness filled with the scent of ripe mangoes, with promises of dampness in the air. Then, oh, the rain, the perfect rain, the stretching, sweeping sheet of rain storms down. Umbrellas turn into walking forests. I sigh, and my sigh rides up to the sky. The raindrops make me laugh out loud, thudding on earth and rooftops and on my skin. Mummy and Nani cross the street to clink a coin at the feet of pot-bellied Ganesh, god of beginnings. Rivers gush along yesterday's roads. I dance with the joy of earth's sudden sweet scent. <laughs> 